Just tell her baby's coming. Baby? B-A-B-Y, baby. No one makes movies like Edgar Wright makes movies. Action, music, sound, editing. How's it working out for you? And oh, the choreography. All joined in harmony and distilled down to the smallest moment. And a few of his movies show off that orchestrated ballet of film craft with more style than 2017's Baby Driver. Oh, there you are. But that's also what every voice on the internet talks about. And yeah, it's brilliant and legitimately worth learning from. But today, I want to look at an element of this movie that's so in your face that so often, we don't even notice it. Color. All of my movies, and, and Baby Driver being no exception, I'm always looking to kind of color code the characters. Specifically the color of what Wright's characters wear. If I close my eyes, maybe I'll feel you again. Um, so working with Courtney Hoffman, the costume designer, we basically picked a, ca a color per character so that that character would be something that you could track. So in this case, Ansel is in like gray and black and white. Jamie is in red, John Hamm is in blue, Asa Gonzalez is in purple and pink, and those are their colors. You're not meant to notice it consciously, but it's there. So why is color so useful? And why does Edgar Wright even bother? So what is it you do? Wright's protagonists have an aesthetic simplicity to them that makes them visually identifiable. In other words, they wear a kind of uniform. Sometimes that uniform is literal, and other times it's a red tie or a ringer t-shirt. But with Baby Driver, Hoffman wanted to go even bolder, having come straight off the heels of Matt Ross's Captain Fantastic. The goal? If you were to dress as one of these characters for Halloween, could you? And would people recognize you for it? How the fuck I look? Let's start with Jamie Foxx's bats. He's big, he's bold, he's loud, wears pure Atlanta, and the color our brains have the most visceral reaction to. Bats. No need for intros, Doc. Everybody from the jungle to the trap, no bats. Basically, he thinks he's the king. I can hurt you like you hurt me too. But because his color is so pronounced, we're taught to associate it not only with him, but with what he stands for. Bats is dangerous and represents one of the greatest threats to baby's plans to elope. So by the end, our association with the color is so defined that it becomes transferable to different settings and to other characters. <laughs> Buddy and Darling are a little different. Pulled straight from movies like Wild at Heart or True Romance, massively devoted, hugely impractical. Skirts too short, necklines too low. As Hoffman puts it, she wanted femininity to be ultra femininity, masculinity to be ultra masculinity. Don't pick up. She wears pink, he wears blue, and it's all dialed up to 11. But a character doesn't have to be bathed in a color to create an association with it. Maybe you paint the office green of somebody obsessed with money. Or you accessorize. This shit is bananas, dog. Which brings us to Baby himself. Unlike most movie characters, who stand out because they dress more boldly than the people around them, Baby stands out because he doesn't. Baby wears flat, colorless clothes, without textures, because at the beginning of the movie, he's young, fresh, and has yet to discover who he is. Despite being a getaway driver for a team of bank robbers, Baby isn't all good or all bad. He does crime, but isn't hardened by it or devoted to it. Dressed in black and white, he could still go in either direction. He's got the biggest arc left to go on, while everyone else is fully formed. He wants to sit there in his car, keep his white shirt clean while the rest of us, we roll in the dirt. But as he goes through the movie, across his own journey, Baby begins to react emotionally to what happens around him, to make his own decisions, to discover who he is and what he wants. The literal blank white slate he wears across his chest begins to transform, until by the end of the movie, it's no longer white at all. Zebra. 
I can see Bruh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing black and white, so you can call me Debra. Deborah wears black and white too, but those aren't really her colors. That's her living somebody else's 50s diner fantasy. Her uniform? Lily James has sort of denim and pops of yellow. And his baby nears the end of his transformation, he begins to adopt Deborah's colors. But Edgar Wright's use of color in costume design isn't all about character growth or storytelling. Sometimes the reasons are color code your characters is actually pretty simple. Because in a lot of action films, especially like spy or like hitman films, they're always wearing black and the cars are black and the goodies and the baddies are in black. And sometimes if you get into a fight scene where both of your actors are shaven headed and they're wearing all black, it's impossible to tell what's going on. One of my favorite things to do when it comes to auteur directors like this is to look all the way back at where they started and identify their roots, what elements have persisted and which were dropped. And that's why this month I've chosen to partner with Movie again because they have this awesome movies category called First Films First which gathers and highlights some really amazing directors debut projects. I recently watched Stereo on there, David Cronenberg's first film, very experimental. But you can check it out or anything else streaming on Mubi for free if you go to mubi.com slash cinemasticks. Your selection will vary depending on your region, but that link will get you an extended 30-day trial on everything Mubi has to offer. If you're not familiar, Mubi is a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating the best of cinema from all around the world. From iconic directors to emerging auteurs, I'm discovering incredible movies every time I sign on. And that's because movies a bit different. Every single film is hand-selected by real people. It's like your own personal film festival, streaming anywhere, anytime. And once again, you can check out anything on Mubi for free with an extended 30-day trial if you go to mubi.com slash cinemasticks. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash cinemasticks for a whole month of legitimately great cinema. As always, I'm Danny Boyd. Thank you so much for watching.